Fremantle without Griffin in this last quarter. Frio need Pavlich to really step up in this last turn. And he did just get going a little yep. in the third. Nat Nui with an extreme jump over the top, trying to work it to Prittis. Ball will have to go up again, I would think. Hey, Pavlich started in the middle of the ground, as you said, had a pretty good uh, third term with the seven disposals. Half his game disposals in that third term. You're holding Nat Nui's arm. You just can't lock on, Zach. That's the explanation from umpire Dean Margetts, the tall version of Razor Ray. <laughs> He's out wide here, looking for and finding Gaff. Just a neat little kick around the corner to Ebert. Ebert from the point of the square goes long and deep. Kennedy coming at full throttle. Off hands, picked up, handball. Standing start, Gaff, shot, missed. Again, under pressure at the start of this term, and uh, so many facets of the third term were in favour of the West Coast Eagles. Only a narrow advantage was the score their way, but they just got to hit the impact the scoreboard now. Emily keeps it alive just. Inside 50 once again. Kennedy here over the top went Robert and G. Lacra just needed the ball to drop a metre short and he was running into an open goal there. He was. All the Fremantle players getting sucked into the contest now. West Coast have one go up to create it and have four on the ground. Broughton and Barlow, 20 possessions each. Shuey and Waters, 20 possessions each. Dispossessing tackle here by Clark, who's got a mammoth job to do on this last quarter for Fremantle. Yeah, he has got a big job. That was well done out of the ruck contest. The ball did go to the opposition, which is not ideal, but he made up for it. His Duffield started the day as a sub. McFarlane, he's been his normal, reliable self in defence. Ibbotson. Bad blue in the third quarter with a kick in that gave Darling. Now look at the goal. Oh, Roberton. Pavlich wanted it, you saw that, just to the right of screen there, ignored that, so he goes down the line now looking for the aerial contest with Fife and his opponent in Waters. Well, if it keeps going like this, Fremantle's going to have to start to try and take a risk off half-back, try and create a little bit more run. The goal they got with McPhee was because Pavlich was able to change direction with his kick, they need to try and do more of that. Glass, Embley. Got it off to Shuey. Some clean ball going forward for West Coast Kennedy. Gave it to the glove, Lynch, who put it down back to Kennedy. Hasn't got much on long, so he only had that option. Lacra can go back to Kennedy if he wants. Beautiful kick around the corner from Lacra. Kennedy's got to go. Oh, McFarland's well knocked him out, I reckon. It was oh, a good it. legal hip and shoulder, but the umpire said he's got him high. Is he, is he going to report him? Look like he was going there. But... Let's have a listen. No one on the man on the mark yet. Still no out. one there. Trying to clear it out. He's asked the trainer to get out, but the trainer's allowed to give medical assistance here, to Kennedy. Right? Let's I'm have a listen to what he says. Can't get him high, okay? Thank you. Can't get Come him high, hey. says the umpire. Now, the doctor's talking to him, umpire. He's allowed to do he that. He said he's right. Yeah, yeah. That's OK. He said he's right to take his kick, so if we can just... Thank you. OK, so the umpire just coming in and checking that, that is all OK. Sean Ryan. Kennedy's got it. Difficult angle. 45 metres out. In he comes. Good-looking kick. I think it's there. It is. Kennedy kicks the goal for the Eagles. Well, that's the one. That's his toughest shot for the day. And uh, that was a fantastic kick. He's been dragging everything left. He's a contact from McFarlane. And it was uh, deemed to be head high. Seems like it might have got him a little high with a forearm. And uh, that's great work from... Uh, Kennedy to get up and... But Lynch, is it a free break. kick? Is McFarlane in, entitled to go for the ball? I mean, he's the defender. He's got the right of way. You are, but um, I think you've got your uh, defender's hat on there. 
Well, the rule says you can't hit him in the head. Kennedy got hit in the head, and that may even be looked at by the match review panel. Yeah, but BT, there's a lot of uh, accidental contact to the head. I mean, Luke McFarlane was going, he's well within his rights to go to the contest. They both got there at the same time. I don't think that was a free kick. On well, yeah. the replay, Jacko, it uh, certainly looked like it was head eye contact. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, having a look at the replay, definitely forearm to the head. Accidental or not, you can't yeah. make contact to the head. And the ball had gone and only just gone, but it was high contact. Got no question it was accidental looking at it again, yeah. but it is in the head. Oh, well, if it's accidental, it's still a free kick. It's yeah. like if you tackle right. someone high exactly. accidentally, it's still a free kick. Biggest margin of the game here with the West Coast Eagles. 14 points. Got to get going now. Fremantle and take some risks. Fife, handball to Main. Got in the way, Waters. Fremantle working to their half forward line, but they look a little disconsolate at the moment, the Fremantle Dockers. They just haven't been able to run into space for probably the last hour of play. Barlow needs a big quarter. 21 touches of the footy today for him. In he goes. Prittis won last year's Ross Glendinning medal. Havlitch around the corner with a high ball. Mazungu, Duffield's there. Up went lower. Almost gave away the free, in my opinion. Shuey, handball. They keep it alive here, the Dockers. Good luck to the voters today. Yeah, yes. for that. That's, that's tough. You nearly, you nearly go Waters just for his courage. I don't think yeah, anyone would right. question, yeah, it's one of those question that. Where individual acts actually might stand out. Yeah, right. Exactly, and he's had uh, plenty of uh, possession as well with 21 by Waters. Really tough call on those making the decision. Let's hope they get it right, otherwise Ross will let them know. <laughs> Rosa, I think Glenn Jakovic is our own man that's involved in the voting there. One of three, boys. Good luck, Jacko. Get it right, Jacko. Yes, I will. Well, you'll be uh, called to count. Here is Gaff. Good got chance. it to Cox. Clark's got him. Now, did he handball it? The umpire said yes. McFarlane goes and gets it. Nice handball to Clark, and Fremantle somehow got out of trouble there. And the kick nursed to Fife. Well done, Zach Clark. Look at Barlow. Great chase. Didn't go to Barlow. Probably should have. Clark just jogged past, said to Fife, don't give it to me. I'm gone. <laughs> kick didn't land on the full, so Ibbotson is told to play on. Now the kick's out wide to Johnson. Mazungu says to McPhee down the ground, are you going to go or not? Otherwise, get out of the way. And he was quite right to say that as well. You can actually see it on camera. Here is Mazungo with a Mazungo with a double lead. Ballantyne turned on the flip and he bit. Got a little kick away. Handball back into Johnson. Can go inside to lower. They go outside. Fife involved here. Fremantle Dockers go long and deep. Main in the contest down there with Schofield. Schofield goes to ground. Picked up magnificently by McGinnity. The sub who's been activated. Main put his head over the ball. Fremantle trying to give a yelp. McPhee keeps it alive. And kicks it out of bounds in the full. Big margin, 14 points. Context of a low-scoring game, just collectively 13 goals kicked. Nikoski gathers. He can go down field without any hesitation and find Lacroix. Does Lacroix take Grover on? Yes, he says, I'm more fleet of foot than you. Gets him back inside. Lacroix to Nat Nui. To Kennedy goes back and takes a wonderful mark. Kennedy stopped his man coming through. And the protection by Nat Nui was great. It was very good. Lacroix took it on because he did have Gaff running into space all by himself. Would have been able to run inside 50, but went to the big forward, who's had a reasonable day. Three goals, three taking a couple of good grabs as well. Tough angle. He just steps to the left a little bit. He, be careful or Margetts will call play on. Have a look at him inching out to the left as he approaches. Now he goes back to the right, Kennedy. Kick on the way as across the face. A let off for the Dockers. Yeah, let off. But uh, at, just at the moment, you can't see where Fremantle are actually going to win the game. When they go into their forward 50, it's under an enormous amount of pressure and you just can't find any players in space forward of centre. Biggest margin of the game, 15 points here. Duffield brings it back in, five elevates strongly. Gee, he jumps well. He's clean, isn't he? Yeah, he's an exciting young player. Classy, clean, classical hands. Barlow, speaking of. 
Little handball inside, didn't have a lot of juice on it. Looking for the give and go back. Barlow got it here. Just a right foot out in front of Mazungu to run onto the ball. He and McKenzie chase. Mazungu grabs. Goes for Main. Off the chest. Couldn't get it. Ballantyne got through the traffic. Who wrapped him up in a ripping tackle? He was almost through the little poor pie. And now West Coast. Darren Glass's eyes lit up again. Oh, he's the Cry out. Lacroix. Oh, well done. Robertson did really well. That was the one, that 450 entry. Just Frio needed to find a way to get a goal. See the drop mark as Main goes down and slow getting up. He's in the hands of the trainers. Maybe a, uh, a hamstring or a groin issue. Off hands. McGinnity involved. Lacroix again, damaging at the moment. Short kick finds an opportunity here. Ebert's got it. Just out of his distance, 55 metres out, top of the square. Nat Nui couldn't run and jump. Was there a hold there? The umpire said no. Fremantle will clear it, but it's going to come back here. West Coast, plenty of time to gather with Smith. Can go short, and he does. Shuey has been pretty damn good today as well. Shuey. 23... Touches more than any other player on the ground, Luke Shuey. High to the square, this time McFarlane reads it better than Nat Nui. Takes the mark. It's only 15 points, but Freo need to get on their bike now. Sort of feels like 30, doesn't yep. it? Just can't get any penetration at all. Shuey again, handball inside. This time Selwood tries to crash his way through. Fast hands brought and really good in. Close handball. Johnson's got to get rid of it as soon as he gets it. He does. Now Rosa. Caught up in the tackle. West Coast get possession. Waters. Long ball forward. Cox. Uncontested mark. Directly in front. And Rose is in a bit of trouble. Yeah, a fair bit of trouble there. Play. Uh, Jono. So he's in the hands of the trainers. He's trying to just get up, but he's coming to the bench, boys. As is Subin for the Fremantle Dockers. Split eye there for Rosa on the left side. Will require a bit of stitch work. And Subin's coming off as well, boys. He's in the hands of the trainers as well. Staple or a bit of hemorrhoid cream. You should just go to the staple gun. Yep, straight in. There's Cox. Oh boy, he's missed. In a time when the Eagles could have just about put him away. Well, that would have iced the game. 7 17. And uh, Freo have really got to start running the ball. Not an ounce of wind here today, so no excuse either. Nick Lowe around the corner. High ball. Pavlich juggling mark. That'll be paid. Pavlich says, I want to go, but he can't. There's no one deep, so he just has to handball to lower running past. Got a penetrating left boot. No one contesting there. Duffield should have gone. DeBoer should have gone. It was great work from Darren Glass to hold McPhee out. Cox, a little chippy ball to Smith. Smith pursued by Ballantyne, looking to apply some pressure. They press up here now. Comes back to Hearn. Nice one to McGinnity. McGinnity, I was reading in the... Record today. They reckon he's Johnny Worsfold's pet. <laughs> it's always a good position to be in. Especially when the coach is about to sign a long-term deal. Or is that Ashton Hams? Either one. Here is Selwood. Adam. It is Ashton Hams, BT. Thank you. And Ashton is from South Fremantle, and John Worsfold's from South Fremantle, so you can uh, see the connection there, boys. And Glenn Jakovic, of course. <laughs> little kick around the corner. Oh, well Stolen. Done by Ballantyne, he hammers it straight back to McPhee, who wasn't quite ready. He should have been. Well, it was a poor kick, though. McPhee was uh, one on two, and just a kick over the top to McKenzie. Ballantyne had worked extremely hard. His pressure in the last 90 seconds was yeah. great, so he deserved to get the turnover, but just uh, the skills wasn't a great choice or kick. So nine and a half minutes remaining. As Lynchy said, they've got to start taking some risks now here, Fremantle. Cox marks on the wing. Can this one open? The game still hasn't busted open yet. Can... No, it hasn't. They need to attack the corridor, uh, Freo. They're just going around the perimeter all day. Kick long and deep, and Silvani keeps his feet when his man Kennedy went to ground. And ball somehow come out the back door. 
An opportunity now, McGinnity gave the handball off. Here's Lynch on his not preferred left side. Got it to the top of the goal square. Barlow out maneuvered by Shelley. He's marked in the goal square and he's got a bit of clamp. And Shuey will line up to give the West Coast a 22-point lead. Well, this might seal the medal. Yeah, for Shuey. Good. Not that I'm in the voting. No, but <laughs> Not that I'm trying to influence the voting. But 25 disposals, 16 contested. Give eight Jack, clearances. Give Jacko a couple more stats, and I reckon he'll be penning it in. <laughs> <laughs> How many contested was that? I'm writing it down. Quick. Plenty. 16. Luke Shuey. Point blank range comes in and kicks the goal. The Eagles by 22. It's been very good in this second half. Hadn't always had the reward on the scoreboard, and that was some good work from uh, Silvani. But after he'd done all the hard work, just missed the uh, the easy mark in the end. And West Coast Eagles have had plenty of numbers in their 450 all day. Haven't always been able to convert. But on this occasion, nice bit of body work and contested mark from Luke Shuey, one of the stars of the competition. Very good young player. There is still hope for the Dockers yet. They are down by 22. They need to take all sort of risks. Another goal for the Eagles. We'll see this game come to an end. John Worsfold and the team. Heading for another win here. What have Fremantle got in this last eight and a quarter minutes? Well, the chance just went up for Freo. I think the crowd realised there's one more chance for Fremantle here. There's still plenty of time to go in this game. Well, they're holding their seats. They haven't started to walk the terraces yet, the Docker supporters. The Guinity. High ball. Henley just trying to bulldoze his way through. Comes back out to McGinnity, who tried to bore a hole through Pavlich with his head. Zach Clark somehow got it out. McPhee took it out of his hands and just mungles one forward. Now Johnson's got good position here. The knock forward, the important ground level ball. Johnson gets that one as well. Just a little kick out wide, looking for DeBoer. Running the same direction, couldn't hold the mark. The tackle by Main didn't quite stick. Hearn. Well done from Gaff as well. Rosa. Back on with the left eye bandage. Here is Gaff. Good hard running late in the game. Yeah, well, Gaff involved deep. Blood, blood rule here. Duffield will come from the ground. DeBoer, I think. DeBoer it is, sorry. A little bit of blood. That'll slow things up. Our West Coast to get all their uh, structures in place. So DeBoer with the split right eye will come from the ground. They have to wait for the player coming on, who is Crowley, to yeah, assume a position that he is happy with. The umpires will check with him and say, are you happy? They look at him as he comes back on. He takes his time professionally. They look, and he says, I'm right to go. Probably disappointing there to lose DeBoer, who could probably kick a goal. Now Schofield and West Coast. Now thinking just a little bit about the clock here. Kick to Lacroix on the lead. I think the biggest crowd of the year to date. 41,055 here today at this venue. Lacroix kick smothered. Here they go, Ballantyne back inside to McPhee, needs to be clean. Go. Got it off the Barlow, long handball on the five. He can go all the way at five, takes a bounce. Thought about the second, he said, no, I can kick it from 50. It needs to be a scoring opportunity. Hill marks, runs into the open goal. It's back to 16 points. Well, some very good defensive work to cause the, the uh, turnover from the West Coast Eagles. have been controlling the tempo of the game pretty well. But the defensive work really flipped over into a good attacking run. And we saw Pavlich was powering forward as well. Wasn't used. Fife in space. Thought he could have had a shepherd when Gaff was uh, uh, chasing him as well. But in the end, uh, Hill was good enough to take a mark in the square and just give the Dockers a bit of a sniff. Wow. Just a little opportunity here for Fremantle within 16 points. What about Darren Glass, first defender to win the Glendinning medal? Could we lock that in? 
That's from Joe Citizen on the Twitter. I wouldn't lock it in just yet. Okay, now we are there, though. Lacroix out of the middle. Trying to rip it out is lower, and he does. Fremantle have just got a little bit of a snifter here now. Goes towards oh, Hill. Go. He got Crunch. Johnson can go all the way. Put him within 10 points. He's kicked the goal. Oh, no, he's missed. He's missed. Oh, Put him a lot further in, too. He had five metres of space still, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did. You can see Mark Harvey there realised that was the opportunity. Just under six, still plenty of time on the clock, but now West Coast go forward through Kennedy. There's still heaps of time. Freo got to defend really well, but probably set themselves up optimistically uh, forward as well. So they can capitalise on these sort of opportunities. Look at Duffield trying to organise the men off to the right so they can get it out to the fat side of the ground here rather than kick it back into the traffic. It's a good kick in the end by Duffield. Pavlich also looking out that side, but there's just too many players there. Yeah, now you've got to be in the hands of a man who can really kick well with penetration. Get over the press if possible. So he has to go to a contest and hope, really. Mazungu off, hands five, did well. All Around space. the corner. Look at the space here for Maine. He marks, he gathers. No one in front of him. He can go all the way. Takes two bounces. He's within 20 metres. Refused to come at him, Hearn. Why not? Kicks the goal. Spot on, BT Hearn had to leave his direct opponent just a little bit earlier. Great kick by five. Great work rate by Maine. He's been held pretty much all day. Glass has done a great job for the majority of this game. He was able then to run in to an open goal. But the goal would have come anyway because he would have stood in the goal square by himself. But anything can happen. You can put the kicker in a bit of doubt, which can then cause a turnover. has left this ground. Fremantle, stunning comeback. Back within nine, Lynchy. Oh, it's fantastic. They found some run. And that's where a couple of good distributors of the ball were involved. Five quick disposal to get it over the press and uh, into space. Very good goal. In the middle, clearance important. Pavlich has got it, couldn't dispose of it. The umpire caught on the backside of it. Has Lacroix got it out to Cox. He worked it out to the wing. Robertson's got to go here with Lynch. Losing the foot race is Lynch. And Robertson goes over the line. 56-65, plenty of time. Mark Harvey on the phone, five minutes remaining. Now, Freo have pushed extra players behind the ball, and Fremantle, for most part, have gone with them to keep it a one-on-one -on -one situation. Valentine on the bench, desperate to get back on. Here is Ibbotson, looked a little sluggish as Shuey closed him down. Pavlich went and got it, I think he's going to get caught. Crowley went without it. Broughton did well, McGinnity also doing well. Zach Clark, one out against the two big ruckmen in the last quarter and a half. Zach Clark, is he going to have the wheels to go the last four and a half minutes? It's going to be a big test. Bo Waters is the loose man in defence for, uh, with Matt Rosa as well. They're the loose men in defence. So Freo have to position their spare men in the corridor in the middle of the ground, get usable. Pavlich, been in every stoppage, basically, in this quarter. Johnson uses the body well. That was a big win, because that was the two-on-one situation. He's got to go hard in the go. corridor. Wanted him to go, short ball to five, but G on oh, the 50. And a 50-metre penalty! Five's going to have a oh, shot for 25 metres! Ballantyne nearly gave it back to them! Five will have a shot from 25 metres to get it back to a three-point ball game. What a cracker, 41,000 people out of their seats at the moment. Fife, with the kick of his life, 30 out, a little right to left, Bender, he's got it! Fife's got it! Fremantle have got three in a row, back within three points. Great work. The 50-metre penalty was a, was a bad one from Darren Glass, who experienced uh, defender and captain. But it's always a danger when you're putting players behind the ball. There's going to be spares short. On this occasion, Fife come up as the short one. Glass has gone back and just made contact with the ball. Hayden Valentine just doesn't need to get involved there. That's, uh, that's ridiculous to get involved in the contest. Could have cost his team a goal. In the end, it didn't. Fife could go. All right, 
It's a three-point game, West Coast way. Anything you want to do here, Brad Johnson, at the moment, if you're either coach? Just, it, it comes down to contested footy now, and, and a bit of forward momentum. West Coast have got to try and get that momentum back to win this game of footy, because they're in front, but the momentum's the other way. What about you, Lynchy? Well, if I was West Coast, I'd be manning up uh, some of the spare wingers for Fremantle. But they're sitting down the wing by themselves. They could get usable. And there's one right there. Still so, plenty of time left, slowing it up like this. Yeah, there's 339, John Oso. I think the, there's enough turnovers in this game to suggest both teams will get another chance. Embley, offhand, some big Fremantle numbers. Clark shifts off the handball. They go again here, Fremantle. A long ball, Barlow works back into the contest. Over the head went McKenzie, did it well. Rosa, stolen by DeBoer. They've strapped him up and they've got him back out there. And DeBoer wrapped up in the tackle. The umpire surveying. He's oh, going to no penalise him. Oh. Now, No prior opportunity whatsoever. Tough, he was just wrapped tough. up as soon as he took possession. Tough decision. Fremantle. Embley kicks long to half forward. Clark. Yeah, well, he's been good. He's worked hard. We've got to get Matt Newell up the ground a bit, play along the wings. Because he's the one who can mark that ball in that contest. They fly five off hands. Here go. The West Coast Eagles, they can get it back in line. Up they fly, Nikoski went high off hands. Here comes Kennedy, got it nicely, wrapped up in the tackle. Did he dispose of it? Now, by B. Margaret said no. And red on at the moment, the umpires. Uh, and uh, Fremantle can't afford the blaze away because that's where the extra numbers are. Here's the good tackle. Silvani and goes wide, looking for him, not finding his man. And Rosa has taken the mark and been paid the free, in fact, for front on contact. Well, that's the trap that 50 metres forward of the ball for Frio. That's where the West Coast have uh, amassed their numbers. Got to go short, then over the top of those spare players. So we're just easing it down the wing. It's a poor kick, though. Touched off hands. No mark will be paid here. Gaff tries to lock it in. Has he made an attempt oh, to knock it out? Are. Dean oh, Mark gets gone. away yes. and says, you are gone. Brown was all over it as they well. Were. Free kick gone. here. Comes to Barlow. Barlow a driving kick inside 50. Free medal are down by three points. Up they go. Oh, he's taken the mark. The umpire's play on. couldn't play on. Justin Smith has couldn't five play on. Five sets of hands. Five sets of hands on that. Nah. Nah. You heard him say five sets of hands on that. Oh, I don't know about that. Let's, Let's have a look five. here. Yep, yeah, probably a good call. I reckon it came from the back of the hands, but in the end, probably a right call. But Fremantle have got it where they need it with a minute and a half remaining. Here's the replay again. His hands over the back did touch it first. But yeah. the Freo supporters wanted the whistle. Wow. This game going right to the wire. Off hands. DeBoer thought about the right. Gave it to Hill. He gives it off here to Fife from the boundary line. Centering ball. Robinson's there. McFarlane's there. That's did right. he get one high? Play on towards the up. They need to get their zone, or they've gone man-on-man, man, Freo, have they? They've elected to go man-on-man, man, drop their zone, and they've manned up very well early, but this first kick usually is the easy one. The second one's the difficult one for the West Coast Eagles. Well, the issue they've got now, Matt Nui and Cox are on this side of the ground, so they've got to now do a lot of work to try and get back over and create a contest. So West Coast in control here at the moment, but a good mark taken by a slide. Oh, got players inside. Silvani. Silvani hammers oh, it back inside. Mazango couldn't get it. Lynch, they need a mark here, and they're going to save it. The Eagles, if they can get a stop play. It comes out wide. Clark and Cox go at it. The two big boys. He's picked it up. Cox has put a tackle on it over the line. Boundary throw in 32 seconds left, and it's in neutral territory on the wing. It's all adrenaline now. Players are spent. Whichever way it goes, they need to be clean. They have only 30 seconds. They're in the middle of the ground. Cox straight back to the boundary line. Was it deliberate? Um, but they said no, it was in the contest. With the ruling, if it was out on the full, that would have been a free kick, but it did bounce. Boundary throwing. 26 seconds left. The Eagles holding on. Cox, front position. Clever knock. Smothered by Ballantyne was good. McFree's got it. Kick around the body. 17 seconds. Half forward line for Fremantle. Mazungu's taken the mark. He's paid it. And he's paid. 10, Ten seconds.
seconds, clock the stops. Mark. They need a mark off this mark. kick. Long time on. Jason McCartney is right there telling the players how long. Ten seconds, Mazungu. Here we go. Barlow's got to take the mark. Couldn't get it, knocked over the line. Clock stops. to reel round from this far out. He's got to keep that straight He's line. He's on the top part from 52 metres out. It's on line! Oh, it's get there! In. It's going for oh. the line! It's touched! Oh, it's a point. It's a point! Let's listen. It's a point. West Coast have won. West Coast have won by a point. In Derby number 34. Gracious me! Oh, well called, Brian. What a cracking finish. They just didn't look like they could find a way to score at the Fremantle Dockers. In the end, it came down to a, probably a dubious free kick, but Hayden Ballantyne from kicking from about 53, 54 metres out from the boundary line has hit the post. Thought he had it. He celebrated. He was running towards the middle of the ground, arm in the air. Thinking, I've got it here, it's home. Or touched. Oh, what a finish. Hit the post, or hit the, post. Hit the, post. the, the post. signal was hit the post. Okay. And uh, so that was a close one. What a, what a great finish to the game. Here's the, here's the uh, deliberate out of bounds. Tough one. Tough one in uh, pressure situation here from 52 metres out. He's flushed it. You were right, Brian. He had the distance. And that has gone... Oh, Gee. that's hit the post. Just Two fingers in there as well. Out of just Two fingers point. in there. Glenn Jakovic is going down to ground level to speak with Dean Cox. West Coast have got up by one point. Let's go down to Glenn Jakovic. Well, thanks very much, BT. What a game, Dean. Uh, are you, what, what can you say to that? Oh, finally, our yeah, boys held on, but... You know, the Fremantle's credit, they come back, but we gave away some stupid 50-metre penalties that we've got to really address, so... Very good game, actually. 22 points up, so effectively four kicks Fremantle need. But you just lost a bit of composure, and Fremantle just seemed to start to get a bit of momentum. You mentioned uh, silly free kicks, but you just seemed to lose your structure a bit. Yeah, we did, and we went along down the line a couple of times. They outmarked us, and then we kicked one out of bounds on the full. So we'll look at the tape. Glad to get away with the win, and um, you know we'll look forward to the Bulldogs next week. Luke Shuey just keeps growing as a player. He was quite sensational from the first bounce right through. He was very good today. Yeah, he's really good. He's a quality young man who's who's going to develop into one of our prime movers through the midfield. And without Curry, we need players like him to step up. With Fremantle's uh, surge in the last couple of weeks, could be another derby uh, first week of the finals, mate. What do you reckon? Yeah, it could be. And, um, you know, they're, they're a good side without, obviously, a lot of their key players. So we'll be keeping an eye on them and keep winning. Well done. Enjoy the win, mate. Wow. Dean Cox relieved. John Worsfold can't believe it. They were absolutely in total control there in the mid part of that final quarter West Coast. And as you pointed out, Lynchy Fremantle found a couple of runners. Yeah, they found a couple of runners. They uh, were, used the ball very well to get on the back of the press and uh, run into space. And it was really well done to put themselves in a position where they had a shot to win the game. It was a very difficult shot, but uh, a cracking game. Derby 34 certainly hasn't let anyone down here. The Fremantle crowd that are in here, 41,000, are a little disappointed at the moment, but they'll be very proud of the way their team came back. OK, there it is. Unbelievable result. West Coast have got up by a point over the Fremantle Dockers. The Ross Glendinning medalists will get back to you on the other side of the break. But what a cracking contest here at Patterson Stadium in Perth to finish round 18 in the Derby. West Coast have won by just one point.